Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. I do political predictions. Thanks so much for tuning into this video. Today, we're going to be talking about a few different topics. One is the big deal going on in Georgia, whether or not the state of Georgia is going to stand in the way of voters and their will, you know, their actual ballots that they want to cast. We're going to be talking about 45 and we're going to be talking about something the spirit guides called the guardians. There's this energy of pol politicians. The spirit guides are calling the guardians. Okay. Let's go straight to Georgia. Cause I know that that is on a lot of your minds and it seems to be kind of freaking people out. Here's the thing. When I go into that energy it fizzles. It, it, it fizzles. It, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't have, in the scheme of the entire United States, it doesn't have the pow. It's not going to take out the whole thing. I have to be careful about using certain words too much or even at all. So I do think it's a disservice to the citizens of Georgia. I've talked about how Atlanta was ground zero. I don't know why it's ground zero. They want to call it ground zero. Perhaps this is why. Perhaps this meddling with our freedom and basically the tenets that our whole country is built upon is the last straw. And when they do this, people say, that's it. Like, that's it. We've had it up to here we're not going to put up with this anymore. We're going to get very vocal. We're going to do what we can to make our voice heard, whether that means getting in the streets or letter writing or recalling politicians. I mean, it's going to get dicey. That, that's what I see. So I'm not saying that they won't do it. I'm saying that whatever they do is not enough to stop the momentum. Okay. So in that way, I'm not saying we don't have to work hard because we have to work three times harder, 10 times harder. We really do. But when we do that, it's pay, it pays off. It, it's not like, you know, eight years ago when we worked and worked and worked and nothing happened. The fix is still in, in a lot of ways that the fix is in, in Georgia, the fix is in, in the media. But the difference is, is that there's more of us now that are awake. There's more of us now that are tuned in. There's more of us that are riding on this wonderful, joyful energy that is created by our new dynamic duo. There's more of us than them. And they're about to find out. So number one with Georgia, I don't see it being a game ender. I think that what's going to happen is they're showing me there's going to be a lot more investigations. And believe me when I say after Kamala Harris wins, we have a prosecutor in the White House and all these people realize game over. I mean, it's game over. Once a Democrat is in the White House, it's, it's game over. They're, they're going to know they've either got to go state's witness if there's still an option to do so, lawyer up, evade, flee, hide. You know, they, they've, those are their options because they're criminal. They've created and done criminal acts. And I feel like specifically Ravensburger and some of these other people that would be in, is he the secretary of state? Whoever the secretary of state is. Some of these people are trying to be too cute by half, meaning they think they understand the law. They think they understand well, they think the fix is in, the guide said. When you look at it, it looks like the fix is in. If you look at it from their perspective, you've got all the media kowtowing to Trump and not giving Kamala Harris any time. You've got even the liberal media <laughs> is attacking the Democrats. So from their perspective, they feel very protected. They feel like, oh, we have this judge. We have this senator. We have this 
congressperson. We have SCOTUS. We're covered. We can smudge and step over the law here and there, maybe even trample over it because we're covered. They would be wrong. So what, and, and if, if any Republican operatives are watching this video, hi, you're toast. You guys are toast. You know you're toast. I know. I feel sorry for you because I know that you're like eating Tums by the boxes and you're, you're like, I know you know. I know you know. I feel sorry for you. I really do. Because your people are not listening to you. You are smart enough to see the big picture. They're not. The best I can tell you is don't go to jail. Don't go to jail for them. I would be like calling the DOJ and being like, yeah, I need to talk. Cover yourself. They don't care about you. Okay. That's my public service announcement to the Republican operatives that are watching me. Sometime in the future, I might do a public service announcement to the Russian and the various uh, spy orgs people that are watching me because I see you too. And I know so much about you. And I know you know so much about me. And, you know, maybe in five years we could be friends. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, let's move on. So I see... I, I I don't want to mess with you guys too bad. You 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 guys, are, I don't want to scare y'all. I don't want y'all to know what I know. Let's put it that way. Just like you don't want me to know what what you know. It's okay. Checkmate. So as far as as far as Georgia goes, which I almost called Georgia Russia, which is pretty apropos. As far as Georgia goes, there there's going to be lawsuits. There's going to be criminal investigations. Except for like I said in that last video. The spear guides are saying it again, the pipeline, and that's what they're calling it. So again, when I say these things, a lot of times I hear it or I see it in the news, the pipeline between, oh, you got your target letter, you're being investigated by the FBI, the CIA, the ATF, the Elections Commission, <laughs> any number of things. At this point, any anybody, <laughs> you can, you're going to be investigated by everybody and anybody. The pipeline from when you got that target letter to when you got your court date is going to be real fast. <laughs> it's like energy is speeding up. And all of a sudden, things that took two or three years to get to the court are now taking mm, six months, eight months. Boom, you're before a judge. It's amazing how fast things can move sometimes, right? So look, Georgia, Georgia's a battleground. We might we might have some shenanigans go on there and we might have some protest and we might have some real problems there. I'm not going to lie. They might, they might pull it off, but it doesn't, it's not the game ender because I just did this video on Ukraine and how magic is in the air. Things that you could never imagine happening are happening. We see this one Sunday we had Biden. And then by that evening, we had Kamala Harris. And then a week later, we had Tim Walz. And now we have hundreds of millions of dollars of money that wasn't there before. <laughs> and we have hundreds of thousands of people volunteering that weren't there before. Magic, timeline, you know, jump, all the above. So here we are. Same energy, you guys. Believe it. It is true. You're going to see red states flip blue. And I'm seeing like some kind of Idaho, Iowa, some kind of I state. There's only a couple of them. Illinois is not it. It's more like an Idaho, Iowa. It feels like something like one of those two states. Maybe it doesn't go completely blue, but maybe it goes purple. You're going to see some pretty surprising things happen. They're going to counteract the shenanigans that's going on in Georgia because the Republicans again think they're too cute by half. Okay. Atlanta's a very urban city. Got a lot of black people there, you know, big Democrat stronghold. Let's attack that. Meanwhile, Kamala and Tim Walz are flipping Minnesota, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, Illinois, Arizona, Ohio, possibly Florida. Say what? 
Say what? Yeah, go ahead. Pick on Atlanta. Pick on Georgia. Go ahead. Pour your resources into that. You do you, boo. If you're lucky, you can make pictures and try to sell them from your jail sale. Okay? That's how that's going to go down. I feel bad for Atlantans. I feel bad for Georgians. I feel bad for you guys. But I don't underestimate you because you guys know, you know the assignment. Okay? You know the assignment. And young people, I, I just, there's so many more young people <laughs> energized right now than the Republicans even know exist. Like, they literally can't even understand the numbers, the physical numbers of population of young people that could be voting. They've never even looked into it. They don't care about it. These are the ghost voters spirit guides are always talking about. The unaccounted for voters who are now plugged in turned on, ready to go, ready to go in the sense that they're actually signing up to be volunteers. It's going to be massive. Okay. So I'm not worried so much about Georgia. And, and what I'm really excited about Georgia is the fact that they're going to be held accountable, that they're going to get law. They're going to get the law against them. They're going to get convictions. They're going to get jail time. That's the thing that's most exciting to me. I'm going to talk about guardians next because I can't remember the second thing they said that I was going to talk about, but guardians. Let's talk about guardian, this guardian energy. Uh, we talk about Tim Walls being big daddy energy, big father energy, big papa energy, big poppy energy. Um, there's this guardian energy that the spirit guides want to talk about. Now, this is also Kamala Harris. This is, this is people that protect the people who need protection. It's just like Kamala Harris. And in, in, when she's talking, Hey, we need a medic, uh, Tim Walls. Hey, we need a medic. Even, I think it was Debbie Stabenow said, Hey, we need a medic. Contrast that with people literally falling out at 45s crazy outdoor in the bald sun in the desert Southwest rally where he's saying, Oh, I got my water. Those people are guardians. There are guardians, but not only them. They also said, um, they talked about cunts, uh, who's running against, isn't he running against, um, I knew I should have written, written this down when they told me at 4 AM in the morning. He's running against the guy who ran out of January 6th. Anyway, I know you're screaming at the screen. I can't hear you. So write it in the comments. Kuntz is going to kill that guy. And it's beautiful because it's magic energy. When I was reading about Colin Allred and Kuntz like a month ago, even weeks ago, I was like, I don't know. They're kind of anemic. You know, their energy was kind of like anemic. And I don't know how to get them <laughs> to have more energy. I just don't. Like, they just don't seem to be really that strong. Well, guess what? Whatever energy Kamala Harris brought to our political landscape it's literally energizing everything and everybody. And so for this guy, Coons or Kuns or Coons, whatever, however you say his name, it's funny because he's standing there. He, he seems like a bigger, like he, I don't know this, but this is what the guides are saying, that he's a little stockier than the other guy. Am I going to have to look up that guy's name? One moment, please. Moly. The guy's name is Kuns, not Coons. Sorry. And he's running against Josh Hawley. Okay. When Kuntz is standing there, and I feel like, I don't know, I feel like he's more stocky -er than Josh Hawley. He's, he's standing there, and Josh Hawley's like running around him, like really fast, like really running fast, running around, running around, running around. And Lucas Kuntz is standing there like, what are you doing, dude? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, do you, like I think Lucas Kuntz is thinking, does this guy have rabies? I'm not, I swear to God, that's what he's, he's thinking. Is this guy going to bite me? <laughs> 
because we know the Republican Party is the party of the weirdos. You know what I mean? So Coots is like, what is, what's up with this guy, right? What is going on? So what ends up happening is Josh Hawley just gets tired. He gets tired. And he's like, oh, I'm so tired. And then he just kind of wanders off and falls down. So I think you could extrapolate from that that Josh Hawley's going to you know, be pretty active, pretty busy, uh, running around, going here, going there, raising cane. And Lucas Kuntz is like, I don't know what this dude is doing. He's like wasting his time and his breath and his energy. And it turns out that that guy wins. Lucas Kuntz wins. He wins. That's magic. That was not what I saw a month ago. Also with Colin Allred, same thing. Didn't see him winning. He's a nice guy. I've donated to him. I will work for him. We, God knows we need him to win against Cruz, but I didn't see him winning. Now I see him winning and they're guardians. Those two guys are guardians. They have the guardian energy. So does Warnock. Uh, so does Gloria Johnson, who's, who's going to win her seat in the Senate. That's magic. She's going against that Marshall woman. Who's like the worst thing since She's terrible. That woman that Gloria Johnson is running against is evil personified. When Disney wrote all those evil characters, that's who they were talking about, was her. And I see Gloria winning. And it's nothing short of magic. And none of these media outlets see it coming. Because all they can consider is their marching orders that they've gotten from their corporate bosses, which is Republican, 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 cover the Republicans, downplay the Democrats. Well, we've talked about the demise of institutions. We've talked about the demise of Hollywood. We've talked about the demise of media. And, and the spirit guides have talked about how we're going to be watching YouTube the way we used to watch Netflix. And, and I got this message from them back during the Hollywood writer's strike because I was doing readings at the time. By the way, I'm going to take this opportunity to say I don't do readings. If you get a message from me on Facebook or any other place, even YouTube, that says, hey, I've got a message for you. I see your dad in spirit or I see an angel near you or you've got a curse against you. Any kind of thing like that, it's not me. I am not contacting you to do readings. I don't do readings. Please don't fall for it. Anybody that you want to get a reading from or know more about, go to their website. If you want to have more interaction with me, I have a great online community uh, for 12 bucks a month. You can join that. You can hang out with me and 450 people. Okay. But please don't fall for the scams. So now back to our regular programming. I saw it with the media because, well, with Hollywood, because when my clients, I, I kept telling my clients who were writers or whatever, not that I had a lot of famous people, I'm just saying that that's how I know this because the, the, their guides kept saying, you're a writer, you need to grab one of those actors that's out of work and you guys need to get together and create a show on YouTube because that's where it's going. And I'm not saying specifically even YouTube, because in a year, there might be a whole nother platform that's sprung up out of thin air. But this is the demise of the media as well. You know, I love Joy Reid. I love Lawrence. Um, I can't think of his name right now. But anyway, he did this whole thing last night where he was really mad about how his own MSNBC covered the Trump talkathon and didn't fact check it. And I get it that these two very ethical newscasters that love what they do, that believe, you know, these are the Edward R. Murrow energies that are still left. And they're trying to hang on. They're trying to show people what true journalism looks like, what ethical journalism looks like. And I get it. Meanwhile, we're not watching, we're not watching MSNBC, we're not watching ABC, CNN, 
Fox News, none of them. We're not watching them. You're going to see an even bigger shift to YouTube. I see Kamala Harris and Tim Walz doing their own, their own public like um, town hall chat on YouTube on their YouTube channel. Now, the problem is that if MSNBC can get them two, five, 20 million viewers, and they're only getting a couple of hundred thousand on their town hall, where you can see where there's not a parody, that that's a problem. But this is where they're going. This is where they're going. Now, what we can do, what you and I can do, is we can literally write, email, comment to Rachel Maddow, to other people that are still on MSNBC, and be a droning hurricane of a voice telling them what we want. I'm your viewer. This is what I want. You guys, we have abdicated our power. We've walked away from it. We've been lulled in, and in, in not when I say we, this is the spear guides talking. Don't come at me. 1 800 spear guides, press one for complaints in case you don't remember that. The majority of humans have abdicated their power, have just thought government runs itself. The Democrats are the same as the Republicans. It's not really that big of a deal. Well, guess what? They're waking up. They're waking up right now. I know you and I, we're awake. We're terrified. We've been white knuckling the last nine years. I get it. But there's still more we can do, you and I. There's still more we can do. We can write comments, email, comments, email, phone calls. Make it a daily, weekly practice to just go on and say, I'm your viewer. I don't like the way you covered this. This was unethical. It's not just one time. We have to be like the maggots who show up, you know, a thousand at a time and get their way. We have a million times more of us than them. If only a certain percentage of us would show up and make our voices heard, we would get their attention. We really have power. We're not using our power. We've got power. Okay. Now, the other thing I just want to give you a heads up about, because the guys were telling me this this morning, is that you and I know what's up. We're awake. We've been paying attention. We've got the ulcers to prove it. I've got the gray hair to prove it. But I want to give you a heads up, and that is, I've talked about it before, but we're getting closer to our due date. <laughs> and our due date is probably in October. maybe. Just, let's just say October, when people that you weren't even sure what their political leaning was, or maybe they were, maybe they scoffed at you for being upset. They made fun of you. Maybe they're not magus, but maybe at the same time, they just told you you're being stupid or you're overreacting or nothing's ever going to change, you know, whatever. Let's just say they're not magus, but at the same time, they're not supportive of you. They're going to show up. And they're going to have that wild-eyed look and they're going to be freaking the F out because they're going to be like, oh my God, the Republicans are stealing the election and this happened and this happened and I'm pretty sure there's a coup that happened and da -da, da -da -da. And you're going to look at them and I want you to take some deep breaths. This is a time when we have an opportunity to really bring on board an ally. But if you instead look at them and scream at them and hit them on their head <laughs> and say, where have you been? I've been telling you, but you haven't been listening to me. Okay, I get it. Maybe we should say that. I don't know. The bottom line is, is that when they come to you, focus their anger towards a helpful direction. Yes, I know. Let's come over here and let's get you sit down in front of the phone and let's get you signed up for some phone banking. Yes, I know. Let's get your wallet out. Let's go over here and give big, big donation to the local person running. When they show up, try to focus your anger at them and their anger at this situation and the absurdity of the whole thing that they haven't seen it until now. Focus it towards something that is useful. Okay. 
because this is going to happen. I promise you, everybody watching this video is going to have one person come to you and say, I didn't know it was this bad. I mean, I always voted Democrat. They're probably lying. But anyway, but I didn't know it was this bad. I didn't know. They're going to be freaking out. And you're the expert because you've been telling them all this stuff for years and they haven't been taking you seriously. So they're going to be freaking out and coming to you to say, hey, what do I do? I can't believe it. they're going to they're just going to have a meltdown. Let them have their meltdown, then get their credit card out and start making some donations because they deserve it after not being supportive all those times for you. OK. Woo. Let's see what else I want to talk about. OK. I don't know why you guys, let's talk about 45 for the 9,000th time and for the love of God, let it end soon. But my God, my spirit guides told me this morning, tried in absentia. Those are the words they use, tried in absentia, meaning uh, they're going to try him anyway, even though he's not here, wherever he's at. I don't know where he's at. I don't know if he's in an embassy somewhere. I don't know if he's in a submarine. <laughs> I don't know where he's at, but I think that he really could flee. Because again, once they understand that even this beautiful operation, they think they got going on with the Supreme Court and beautiful operation, they think they got going on with Georgia. Once they realize that that's not going to work for them, you're going to see everybody flip and they're all flipping on one person. And that is 45. They're all flipping on him. And actually the guides are saying, um, this woman just flipped on him. One of his aides, uh, I don't know her name, but she just flipped on him. I'll put a thing on the screen. And, and she did it in such a way that if she doesn't make the prosecutors happy, if they don't feel like she's being truthful, they, then it's off and they get to charge her she's given up all of her rights. They get to decide whether she's a good enough, where she's been transparent enough. And if they feel like she's lying to them, boom, in the clink. It's, it's not, a, she did not make a good deal for herself. Let's put it that way. She did not make a good deal for herself, which makes you believe that that was the best deal she could make. And if that's the best deal she could make, 45's goose is cooked. Now, the last thing, uh, the last thing I want to talk about. This is important. This is super important. Okay. I can do it. Jack Smith. Jack Smith. Okay. I did a video where I told you guys that I saw Jack Smith standing before this fog. I don't, it, it, some kind of veil. And he looked up all the way up, like his head went all the way up. And I knew when he was looking up that it was, you know, all the way to the tip top, which they told me was SCOTUS, which was the Supreme Court. So he looked up. Now behind him were all of his employees, all of his prosecutors. They weren't right against him. They were in the back. Okay. They were all kind of in, in like at their desk or something. It was like a works, a workplace. And then so I knew this thing that he was blocked by this veil. He looked up and he's like, the veil goes to the Supreme Court. Then he went through the veil. He disappeared through the veil. And I looked at his people and his people's, all those prosecutors, their eyes were like as big as half dollars. They were just huge. And at the same time, the energy was that, yeah, he can do anything. This man can do anything. Like he's not human. He, of course, he could go through the veil. So I followed him through the veil. I just popped through there with him. And what happened was on the other side of the veil were these green fields that were like a little gentle hills, but but like, you know, here's a hill, here's a hill. They were that beautiful green, green, green. This is before Kamala Harris. This was two months ago. I don't know. But that green is very similar to her to Brat Green, to that green also with her sorority. So I'm looking and I'm thinking, well, does he leave? Does he flee? Does he go on vacation? You know, like I said in the video, I'm like, maybe he goes on vacation. And then he stuck his head up, just his head on the other side of this hill. And I was like, 
Come on, well, there he is. But he's not there in the office. But he's up there. And you have to understand, too, like, so it wasn't stormy. It wasn't cloudy. It wasn't foggy. It was beautiful. Blue sky, green fields. I'm like, is he a leprechaun? Is he in Ireland? You know, what is happening right now? I didn't, I didn't understand it. At the time, I thought, I think he's jumping timelines. I think he's jumping ahead and doing some work. Everything is paused. His work is paused. He's at a standstill. So he ins inspects the thing that's keeping him at the standstill, which is the veil. He looks up, sees where it's connected, goes through that wall. It's not a wall. At first, we thought it was a wall, but then it was a veil and he went through it. So here's where, what I want you to know. It is very possible. Please take a deep breath before I tell you this. And do not come at me in the comments. 1-800-SPIRIT-GUIDES. Press 1 for complaints. Please understand the line is often busy because I'm calling it. He may step down. He may step over. And if he does... It's his choice. And if he does, it means we're still going to win. Okay. Because I just saw a video from Libby with Meister Tarot. And she was like, gosh, I wonder if he's going to step down. When I saw that, the guide showed me him jumping, jumping through the veil. And I'm like, okay, this makes sense. It also makes sense with this magic energy around what is happening right now. What is happening in Ukraine is nothing short of magic. How the Ukrainian army jumped over the border and created air superiority through a series of fakes and maneuvers that totally blew up the Russians' entire military plan is magic. It's the same energy. The fact that Nancy Pelosi wanted a different duo in the White House and Biden and Harris said, no, we're going to do it our way. Thank you, but sit down over there, Congress lady. And in one Sunday, we have a dynamic new president-elect, and then a few days later, a dynamic new VP-elect. It's magic, you guys. We're living in the land of magic. And if Jack Smith thinks that because Thomas wrote a little love note to Cannon that said, by the way, I think that Jack Smith is illegally appointed and you could probably throw that case out. And she did. Now, none of the other Supreme Court justices signed on to his crazy love note, which leads us to believe that if it did go to the SCOTUS, it wouldn't have the support it needs. So there is that. But let's say that Jack Smith doesn't even want. What let's say that Jack Smith and, and he just now asked for a delay in the case. He delayed the case. He's like, I need a little bit more time. You guys, he's about to pull a deep fake. <laughs> he's about to jump through the rainbow, through the veil. He's about to pull a Ukrainian deep fake. He's about to pull a Biden Harris deep fake. So don't be upset if you hear Jack Smith steps down because that's not what's happening. That's not what's happening. If he steps down and he allows for a female prosecutor who might even be black to take over his position, well, then that's just more karma. If the DOJ says, okay, instead of appointing him, we're going to hire him. He's going to step down as prosecutor, as special prosecutor, and then we're going to put him on the payroll. There's lots of ways to make this happen that can literally take the rug out from under the Republicans who think they're too cute by half, who think they know all the rules and they think they know how to outmaneuver justice and the Democrats. Well, they're finding out justice and the Democrats ripped off their blindfold. They woke up from their nap. They see what's happening. 
And now they're going to roll their sleeves up and they're going to get busy. That's what's happening right now. So if you hear Jack Smith step down, it's not the end of the world. It's not. Because nothing they do is going to stop the justice train. Nothing. Nothing they do is going to stop the justice train. The only thing is how much justice do we get? If we work really hard, if you and I work really hard, we can have more senators. We can have more reps. We can have better people in our state government. And we'll have more justice faster. If we don't work so hard and we just get tired and disgusted and scared and depressed, then we're going to leave our brilliant guardians, our brilliant, joyful warrior duo, Harris and Walls. We're going to leave them without the tools they need to help us. We got to help them. We're all in this together, including spirit. Spirit's providing the magic. Nothing short of magic is happening right now. You cannot deny it. It's right here before our eyes. Let's jump on the bandwagon. Let's help spirit. Let's help Walls and Harris and Biden and democracy and justice. Let's get involved. No matter where you are in the world, get involved. Because after this election, we've got even more work to do. We're going to go after these scoff laws, is what they want to call them. Scoff laws, which means scoffing at the laws. We're going to go after them. You're going to see justice meted out in ways that I don't think the United States has ever seen. Because even after the Civil War, we had whatever that was, not reclamation, but we didn't do what we needed to do. We didn't. We did not. We allowed the South to be assholes. We did. After Nixon stepped down, he shouldn't have been pardoned. We shouldn't have allowed that. Gore, we shouldn't have allowed him to have his election stolen. When there were fake weapons of mass destruction discovered. We should have done something about that. Iran Contra with Reagan, we should have done something about that. Hillary's stealing of her election, we should have done something about that. Okay. We've got a long litany of things that we should have stood up for. Now, I think our rent is due. Our karmic rent is due, and we're going to stand up for it. We're not playing this anymore. It's done. We're done. We can do this the easy way or the hard way, right? The easy way, we all get out there and vote like mad. We text bank, phone bank, volunteer, put out signs, talk to your neighbors, and that's where we're going to win this election. It's going to be us. We can't count on the media. The media is out. The media is with the other side. So all those people that are just tuning in to CNN or tuning in to MSNBC, they're not getting the real deal. They're not getting the truth. It's up to us. We're the truth tellers. You and me. We're going to be out there casually, calmly talking about Project 2025 casually, calmly talking about things, raising questions. We don't want to go out there and talk at people. We want to bring up questions. I wonder how 45's ear healed so fast. I have a shaving cut on my leg right now that's not healed from four days ago. From a, a shaver, a lady's shaver that's not healed? Come on, what the heck? But yet he got sliced his ear by an AR rifle and it's healed that fast? Come on, 
this narcissistic, what is the word they're trying to use? It's um, psychosis. This narcissistic psychosis we've all been lulled into is wearing off. And we're coming to our senses. It's time for us, you and me, to go out there and talk to these people and explain to them what's really happening. Help them understand the truth. Okay? Take really good care of yourselves. I'm going to end this video right here. If you've watched to the end, thank you so very much for doing so. We're all in this together. Take breaks. Take good care of yourself. This is what I'm doing. I know I'm on vacation, quote unquote, and I'm working, but I need nature. And I don't have nature the way I need it where I live. So I travel to get my nature fix, and that helps me transmute the energy out of my body. We can't just take it on board and leave it. Go get Reiki healing. Listen to Reiki healing on YouTube. Release the energy. Don't let it get bottled up in you. It's going to make us sick. We've got a lot of work to do. I want you to be well. I want all of us to be well. I want us to be joyful. Joyful warriors. Joyful fighters. When we fight, we win. We're not going to go back. You can get a t-shirt that just says we're not going to go back. The people who know will know. Right? Take really good care of yourselves. I'll see you real soon. Susan Lynn, Psychic Medium, signing off. For entertainment purposes only, 